This episode of XIV Reborn is brought to you by Audible for a free 30-day trial and to receive a free audio book. Just head on over to audible.com slash gamebreaker. Got to use the URL. Audible.com slash gamebreaker. Big Mong, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode two of XIV Reborn for August uh, 6, 2013, the Final Fantasy 14 show. You're watching Game Breaker TV. I'm Gary Gann, and coming up on today's show, character creation is available for PC players. Do, 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 do. Uh, data mining causes some major controversy. Uh, dates are out in the wild, but what do they mean? And we're going to talk a little bit of crafting and lore. You guys gave us a little stick last week. For not chatting about that so we will this week uh but joining me first for some xiv chat you know him as mr happy mr michael poveromo how are you sir doing quite well how about you gary uh, i'm doing fantastic back for episode two we had a pretty overwhelming response last week and people seem to kind of like the show that's always good <laughs> I, I love it when people enjoy the show yeah better when they hate don't hate the show so don't hate the hate the man <laughs> Somebody I absolutely hate, Mr. Michael Byrne. Good evening, you, Mr. Gannon, my nemesis. How are you, I sir? I prefer when people hate a show. Yes, we always love that. No, overwhelming <laughs> response last week. <laughs> yeah, Live show good. just blew, knocked it out of the park. I mean, you guys really just showed up like crazy. I uh, hope you guys like the show. I'm glad to have you guys back tuning in to the live show for uh, another week for episode two. And... Um, I guess for all of you watching live, you may just want to stick around to the very end because I may have a little bit of a secret surprise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then if you're watching it on the download, obviously the surprise will be revealed. All will be good, but don't go anywhere. So you've got something special coming up towards the end of the show. So, all right. So first up this week, um, obviously you can't play the game yet. We're all waiting. We all wish we could, but the latest, uh, you know, you got the latest benchmark you, uh, you can create your character. Um, so last week, we, we kind of went, you know, all out overview to catch people up. One week later, we're already talking about creating characters. What's up with that? <laughs> Moving too fast. Yeah. Moving too fast. But we said episode one was going to be a little bit of a refresher. Now we've got stuff to, that's really going on. Um, I've read some of the comments uh, surrounding the benchmark. And the one thing that really stuck out to me was that some people are noticing that they were getting higher scores this time around. Did you guys have similar experience with this? Mr. Byrne, you first. Indeed, I did, sir. Indeed. I mean, if we're just going to measure it like that, absolutely. And most of the comments turned into a, a status check of people measuring. Uh, I did. I scored about 1,200 to 1,500 higher than the exploration benchmark months ago what about you what are you mr uh mr happy well uh on the normal settings i was able to go to about 14k which is significantly higher than it was for the last benchmark and even on absolute max settings i was still pushing between 6.5 to 7k so all set to go for the game it seems so it yeah, sounds like they're, uh, they're busy doing some optimizations yeah, even chat's posting right now anywhere for custom maxed stats. They're posting anywhere from eight grand to thirteen grand, uh, which seems to be about the norm. Most people aren't having a problem here, which is almost the exact opposite from version one point right? So when yeah, the what's benchmark what's came actually, out, and nobody ask, could some, run the uh, trailer. <laughs> yeah, I know it was really bad. But put, right. some, put that into context for some people who may have not have run the old trail. Like, what do those numbers mean? I mean, you're just throwing numbers out there. What does that sort of mean yeah. for the average player in terms of frame rate and performance? So if you if you can run the benchmark, uh, which consists of two pieces, the one we're talking about right now is a trailer. It shows a movie with a bunch of different clips, different environments, different flash effects. Uh, if you just sit back and watch it, it's pretty cool, and it will tally a score for you while you go. If you score anywhere above 2,000 uh, 2, points on that total score when it's all said and done, you'll be able to run the game on at least the default settings. 
Now, it's not guaranteed. Of course, there could be that odd little bug here or there that just doesn't work for you. Uh, but as long as you can get at least 2,000 points on this, you, you should can be customize good. the settings, you should be good. My wife's computer, to give you an example, the kind of rig that is now able to handle this that wouldn't have had a prayer years ago, my wife's uh, computer is by no means a gaming rig at all. It's made for office work, clocks in at just under 6,000 on uh, high settings. Can't wow. do maximum, but she can do high, just under 6,000. A lot of rigs are, are not having a problem with eating right through the, the benchmark. Now, would you guys would you guys think that the that the majority, the bulk of the um the hard on the hardware side is being handled by the GPU, your video card? So if, if any of you out there are probably having like a low benchmark score and you want to increase it, that's gonna be the number one place you should you should probably go to do an upgrade before CPU or anything like that. What um what kind of video cards are you guys running to get these numbers? Oh, well, I'm just running a, a 6850, a Sapphire AMD Radeon 60, uh, 6850, so it's nothing spectacular. I, I know people who have the 7800 series who are breaking 10K. They don't need uh, SLIs or anything. So you can have two, three-year-old, four, five, even five-year-old graphics card and still be able to play this game pretty crisply. Wow. So it actually does sound that it's not even the fact that like GPUs have come a long way since the 1.0 release. It's actually a lot of optimization going on on their end. That's even because that's a pretty old card uh, that you're talking about. That's not a very new card, if I'm correct. Um, no. So, yeah, that's that's um, I want to get into some of the controversy surrounding the uh, benchmark tool. And of yes, chat room, that is some controversy. Um, but let's 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 continue catching some people up for a minute and talk about the character creation for a minute. Um, very in depth. I can adjust almost anything. Uh, any key features that you guys feel are, are kind of missing uh, from the character creation? Anyone disappointed at this point? Mm. I wouldn't say disappointed. I would have liked a little Gary laugh because both. It was both like it, it was like it was Meh. like in stereo. <laughs> 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 We're two more Mike and Mike. We're we're Mike in and Mike. It's the Mike and we're Mike show. We're actually just one person in front of two different green screens, right? That's what it is. <laughs> exactly. Figured it out. Uh, I don't. Well, I Bernsie, wouldn't say disappointed. Are you missing something? No, I wouldn't say disappointed. Uh, it it lacks the uh, high customization of something like Ion's character creation or things like that, where you're literally adjusting peaks and valleys on the face. So I would like to see it get uh, more in depth, but uh, I can't say that I'm unhappy with it. There's enough presets to choose from and small tweaks that you can make along the way that it's very, very unlikely you're going to come across too many people that look exactly like you. And as long as you can beat that little benchmark where I don't see nine of me within 50 feet of the starting zone, I'm, I'm okay with the character creation. Well, that's my, well, that's my question because I got to say like in beta... It does early levels at least, and this is a question because you guys played a higher level than I did. When does it not feel like that cookie cutter? Because I have to say, I kind of really felt that, especially when it came to like the clothing aspect and things like that. Early levels, I was like, wow, I see 20 other people that kind of look pretty damn close to me. There's my chest piece. There's my chest piece. Yeah. There's my chest piece. There's my chest piece. So I know that I know that that's uh, totally different than your character creation, but at the same time, like the combination of it is, I do kind of feel it like it didn't have the amount of customization at early levels that I would have personally liked. When did it start really feeling like unique? Uh, really starts feeling unique. I think it, it can start feeling unique early. You just have to look at all the different gear. I'd say 15 is really where people stop looking a lot alike. I mean, you're still going to have the general, like there's still a main set of caster gear and a main set of, you know, non-dungeon caster gear. There's a lot of different gear sets that become available around 15. But... It, it just gets more diverse as you go up, essentially, when you get to different types of gear, when you get the stuff, maybe somebody wants to sock a materia into gear so they look differently from everybody else, as opposed to just doing uh, dungeon gear and all that. It, it gets more diverse as you go up. And then you also have the combination later of being able to dye that gear uh, once you get a little further along in the levels. Uh, not to mention that like six months after launch, you're going to have vanity slot that even just even more diversifies the look. So you're, you're going to have options, but yeah, it does look kind of goofy at the beginning, the first few levels where everybody's got the same harness on. So so getting back to the character creation, do, do, do my choices here impact gameplay at all? I mean, like, does the ra does race matter or does clan selection matter to gameplay? 
Uh, well, race slightly alters your yeah. starting stats. <laughs> And I say slightly because all the starting stats will always equal 120, and the differences here are extremely, extremely negligible. I mean, let's say you had a five strength difference between two races. It, that's equivalent to about an extra point of damage on each ability. So it's you won't even really notice it when you start looking at number ranges and things like that. So uh, and clan is just a more a way to give diversity within the race itself in terms of. One clan tends to lean towards being a physical uh, clan, while the other one leans towards being magical. So that way you have options within your race in case you want sort of different starting sets. For those min-maxers out there, it's really only important to them. Yeah, and it's it's not only is it important to the min-max, though, they ha th those types of players also need to know exactly what class or job they're going to be playing all the time to really get the benefit out of there. Since you're changing, or ideally, you're changing classes so often, Yes, for me, I'm going to start as a Thaumaturge and roll into Black Mage. Intelligence is an important stat. It would make sense for me to roll an Elizin uh, Dusk White to get the highest intelligence out of all the possible race and clan combinations. But if I ever want to change that to a different class, I've kind of negated that choice already. So not only do you have to be a min-maxer, but you really need to know that, that I'm going to stick to this one or two different roles all the time. To me, play the game the way you want, because even at 50, the difference is almost negligible. I mean, if it's a one-point difference at level 1, it's not geometric. It's still one-point difference at level 50. Pick a well-rounded character and something you like looking at, unless 18 extra damage at level 37 is really, really important to you. I'm sure for some minion maxers, it actually is. So, but yeah. that, that is... Um, something that I think a lot of people, uh, get confused about, probably not most people watching this show, but I do want to <laughs> right? talk about it. Um, but what about the birthday and deity selection? This is always something that I, I think a lot of people have sort of been like, do I really need to spend a lot of time? And there's a lot of options and a lot of choices here. Do I, am I going to make the wrong choice? Uh, not really. I mean, the birthdays most, most closely resemble the real world dates. You know, you have 12 essential months, which are your astral and your umbral eras, and you have a 31 day calendar you can choose from, but there's no sort of influence on that, on your character. It's really just something for you. The deities, they do make a slight difference. Uh, they change your elemental resistances a little bit, but at maximum, the difference is either plus two or minus two elemental resistances. So you're not gonna pick a deity like I want to have more fire resistance for when I fight different. You're not gonna, you're not gonna do something like that. It's just, it's again one of those more negligible things. That's so. Really what's my, what's my motivation to really research and kind of like understand all those ramifications of those choices? What's the real why? Why is it really there? Is it just a little bit more flavor? They're they're going to do stuff with these. At least that's Yoshi P's intent is to have these influence things at some point, even if they're relatively minor things. Like Mr. Happy, you can confirm if if I'm right here because I didn't get this far and or play version one all the way until the last split second. But during the twelve gods quest, uh, didn't your deity that you picked at the beginning give you a bonus when you visited their stone during that quest line? You got like a ring and, and a couple extra pieces for visiting that stone. Yes, actually, you did get something like that. And as you said, it, it was just a really minor thing. But, yeah, uh, it's something everybody's going to get, but you got yeah. it at a specific point. And I think that's what Yoshi P is going to stick with is those minor details. Um, because, again, if it's not implemented at the start, it's, it's not very fair to not let me change that and then implement high consequence items later. Yeah. Completely. All right. So basically, my character's all created up. You know, you, you roll it all up. Um, can people actually use this character? Uh, PC players can. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've created a bunch of them, and I know I'll be able to bring them over on the PC. But uh, PS3 players, uh, there was an apology that said, sorry, guys, wait till phase four. Yeah. And, and PS3 only players. If you're going to play on both, then yeah, you can push onto your account on the PC and play on the PlayStation 3, but PS3 only players, you got the shaft. Yeah. 
Now, what do you guys, how do you guys feel about this, like, personally? Because, like, I, do you guys think of this whole, like, releasing this early in the character creation kind of, like, a neat thing, and I know a lot of players play, but on the other side of the head, it's, like, it's always brutal for players and fans who want to play, right? You're just going to be, like, sitting here staring at your characters for three weeks, and you're just like, Ugh. oh, my God, it's, like, such a carrot on a stick. I mean, are hey, you a fan I of put, this? I put a Twitter uh, or tweet out when I created mine and, and threw it out there, and one or two people immediately were like, oh, great, now you have three weeks to sit there and look and find what's wrong with that character. Yeah. <laughs> 45 minutes later, I did and was <laughs> rolling up another one. So, yeah, it's kind of brutal, especially when you get the not just the creator, but the music and the whole ambiance. You're like, oh, just where's the login button, for God's sake? I mean, it's better than nothing. <laughs> I'd, I'd, ra <laughs> I'd rather we have. I'd rather I be able to log on the loads and be like, "Oh, I can do this." Okay, let's get better. <laughs> let's burn one more hour while I wait for phase four to start. Okay, that hour's done. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Um, so, all right, so PC, PS, PS3 players, obviously, obviously they don't need a benchmark. There's nothing to benchmark there. They've got a, a hard-coded system pretty much, and they're going to get what they get. Uh, they do not get uh, to create characters in advance at this time. They said they have to wait to Phase 4. They're basically, you're saying, like, just that they get to do it when the, uh, the beta opens up for Phase 4. That's it. Now, nothing is going to come. Now, do we know, are all those characters going to be held over? Have they said anything about that? Mm -hmm. as, as long yeah. as there isn't some crippling game breaking bug discovered in open beta open beta carries over into early access slash launch yep do you think exactly. more would you like you think more game companies out there should take this approach with the character creator and the benchmark because i can't i can't remember too many i can't think of too many mmos especially that have done this where they release a benchmark tool and a character creation tool um, it's kind of off topic. I'm just wondering, what, what's your feeling? Do you think like more companies like, you know, Wildstar, Tessa, you think they should consider this sort of early creation thing? I do. I think it's a good way to keep people excited for the game. I mean, it, it's also nice just to be able to, because a lot of people, when a game comes out brand new, you want to jump right in. I mean, some people like to take maybe 30 minutes on their character, get everything down, but imagine if you have 30 minutes more to play the game instead of making your character. That's essentially what mm. this benchmark does and it's running on <laughs> systems that are already in the game so it's like <laughs> it's, anyway, it's, it's like you're, you're years <laughs> to play the game and you're like but i'm gonna have 30 more minutes to play it's, this game yeah. think about, I'm gonna think about create a character no, but if you're, if you're, go, if you're about, going for s server first in any way shape or form that is actually really important hey think about christmas morning when you gotta wait for your parents to wake up you remember <laughs> that you know those last 30 minutes were brutal Mr. Happy is not sleeping. Thing. You're not sleeping it's, launch night, are you? You're staying I am up all get every minute of my sub. Th this is still from Final me. Fantasy Eleven. See these black eyes? They're still from Final Fantasy Eleven. They're gonna get. I'm getting every minute, of every, every every month out of my subscription fee. Now it is really cool. I, talking about launch day really quickly on and thinking about that in server first. I mean, obviously this is gonna play into people being ready and prepared like that. Are we going to see, is, is there a big server first kind of mentality amongst the Final Fantasy community? What, what are we going to see people going for right off the bat? Crystal you Tower. Have to ask this guy, where the hell is he? <laughs> he's all, he's all <laughs> twisted up. I uh, can't Bird's find doing, him. You're Bird's doing magic tricks. He's got sleight of hand going on. I, I gonna, have nothing to do with Realm or World <laughs> First. I'm going to enjoy the game and let his little pompous elite legacy ass worry about all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm, now I'm trying to figure out. Now I'm trying to figure out where you are, all right? Because so, so I can, I can reach over it anyway. Uh, everything, everything had a server first and a world first sort of mentality. I mean, it, it's kind of standard with MMOs when brand new content comes out. Even the content that was there in 1.0 that's being brought over and revamped, it's gonna have. There's gonna be server first, world first mentality. Everything. It's just it. It's great to be able to say. Or, in my opinion, that okay, I did it first. What yeah. are you going for? You're gonna go. For, what are you? What are you gonna be going for? Like the same things. Everything else. Are all of the raid content out there. It's always got to be server first, world first. Everything. You're everything. going for all of it. You're gonna try and get Mr. All Happy's name on all of it, man. Yeah. The live stream yeah. is gonna be fantastic. I can't wait for this. Nope. No other way. Nope. There you go. Figure. I figured out, Chuck. Chat, uh, it, chat, it, chat pointed you out to me. <laughs> it's mirrored. It's mirrored on mine. So when I pointed this way, I went the other way. <laughs> All right, I want to uh, I want to get into the, some of the controversy that struck uh, after this, but really quick, I want to tell you guys about 
Audible. That's right. We want to get you guys hooked up with a free audiobook and a free 30 day trial. If you guys check out Audible yet, you know what Audible is. It's audiobooks on your iPhone or your iOS, your Android device. Um, I love it. I have been a fan of Audible for long before they were sponsors. I'm so glad to have them on as sponsors. Where's my app? I'm still miss an amazing, amazing book by Ernest Klein. Check this out. It's called Ready Player One. This is a book for MMO players. I'm telling you, it is fantastic. I screwing around. I memorized every last Bill Hicks stand-up routine. Music? Well, covering all the music wasn't easy. It took some time. The 80s was a long decade. Ten whole years. And Halliday didn't seem to have had a very discerning taste. He listened to everything. So I did too. Pop, rock, new wave, punk, heavy metal. From the police to Journey to R.E.M. to The Clash, I tackled it all. I burned through the entire They Might Be Giants discography in under two weeks. Devo. Check it, check it out. There's so much nostalgia packed in this book, and it has a lot to do with like virtual worlds, MMOs, all kinds of crazy stuff it is i guarantee you're gonna love this gamers are love it i have not talked i have to say i have not talked to one single person yet one who has not either read or listened to this book on audible and has not thought it was fantastic not one it's called ready player one is by ernest klein highly recommended it's narrated by will Wheat, and it's about a little over 15 and a half hours i mean look at the ratings on that thing 4.7 with 6800 ratings like how can you possibly go wrong so i want to hook you guys up with a free uh, 30 day trial and uh, you could uh, download ready player one as your free book all you got to do is go over to audible.com slash game breaker use that url pop it in make a new account and uh, download the app and you could be downloading uh, this or any one of the other great amazing books that they got over here on audible it's all up to you check it out and then uh, if you like the service and you keep it and you go past the 30 days there's different tiers you know you pay a monthly fee and they give you credits towards books you know, every month I get like two books or credits enough to get like two books. So I love, 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 love Audible having them on as sponsors. Check it out. Audible.com slash Game Breaker. All right. So apparently there's, uh, you know, there's all everything's all well and good. But there's a darker side to this early character creation stuff that happened. And it's, uh, it's, it's data mining. Data mining. This all went down while I was out of town, by the way, guy. I mean, I was out of town and I just, all of a sudden people were like tweeting at me and hitting me up and being like, whoa, stuff's going down. And I'm like, what? So obviously with data coming on the internet, uh, people start data mining. Uh, and even the, uh, the benchmark software isn't immune to that. So that was also kind of dug through what brought this on. Um, I mean, what, what, what kind of information, what would make someone want to mine this type of download? Yeah, it's kind of a weird file. I, like, guys, we're going to be, I see chat room. It's like, hey, uh, guys, you know, Square or Enix is kind of upset about this. And yes, they are, rightfully so. We're not going to be going through lists of things that were was in the data mining files here. It's just important to acknowledge that it happened. Uh the the big trigger though, Gary, was the the fact that the benchmark was two and a half gigs. Uh, oh, yeah. When you when you installed the benchmark, yeah. you're like, it's a trailer and the character creation tool, and it's two and a half gigs. Like what's so under people, the hood? <laughs> right what's and under that's exactly the hood. There's there's something in there. People started tearing into it. Found out that the benchmark was you know it's it's a modified client on it in its own right but probably more so than actually was intended. There was probably some stuff in there. I speculated in an article on Game Breaker before we knew what had happened that it may have been done intentionally. I mean, it just seemed so obvious that what they were finding with different pictures and images and things, it just seemed like, you know what, maybe Square was like, we'll throw them in here and we'll let the, the internet go wild and advertise for us. I was wrong. <laughs> Very. But I still have no idea how those files ended up in there if they weren't supposed to be there. So I mean, this yeah. isn't like a new thing. I mean, people have been data mining, you know, clients right. for forever at this point. So for them to like kind of have that stuff in there, not think people were going to find what what um what was anything? So well, obviously some stuff was found. What was found? I remember seeing that XIVDB 
and Dat Mining both had information posted at one point in time. And uh, what did what did we all find out, Mike? We're, we're really we're gonna we're gonna do we're, <laughs> we're not gonna go through lists, guys. Again, no, just, it's just not gonna not happen, doing, guys. It, 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 it's not gonna start listening. But we found. All right, let's see. Let's see how we can do this safely, guys. Some gear, some changes yes. to abil- <laughs> some changes to abilities, yes. some new abilities some gear, in the some game. Abilities. Pets, some uh, graphics, items, some graphics. You know, some things numbers. Like that. We found some out pretty binary, much. You know some... what? Let's just let's. Just, we found a shit ton of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> everything. It was everything. a metric shit ton, Gary, uh, of stuff that should not have been in the benchmark file. Uh, if it really needed to be secret, any However, any clarification it's hard on, to find on now. what? Any good, clarification on why that stuff is in the in in the benchmark? Then, I I the only thing I can even come close to think of is that they needed some of those files in there just to to get the uh, the trailer to sort of run on the engine properly. Mm. But even that's a stretch. Yeah, that's like, kind of a stretch. Once you watch the trailer, you're like, nah, okay. Yeah, uh, that's that's it. That's a two point two two point six gigs. No, shouldn't uh, shouldn't have happened. So Gary, what we was need, uh, we need to move on? The NSA is now watching. I know the, the cease and desist. The, yeah. the cease and desist is coming through right now. Um, what? Uh, so what was Square's uh, reaction to all of this? They were pissed, uh, yeah. big time, big time. Uh, to to be fair, yeah, you put them in there. I mean, so you kind of got to be pissed internally first rather than externally, which I'm sure some heads rolled behind the scenes. But, luckily, the big gaming sites that did start pushing this stuff realized once Square reached out to them, okay, you know what, let's let's back off. And they've kind of sealed the information, hidden the information, did rollbacks to Phase 3. That doesn't mean that the information is not going to come out, but they the companies that did put it out there were at least respectful, and, and Square Enix will have a chance to reveal it first to reveal all that stuff. So, a little bit of a rollback. It's challenging to find this stuff now, which is good in, in my book, but Square should be a little uh, a little miffed internally before they're externally miffed on this one. Yeah, and I that's agree. like I said, I was out of town and everybody just started getting tweets and, and emails about this, and I, I, didn't, I didn't get the full story while I was away, but man, I heard that they were definitely a little bit upset with everybody, so yeah. they found stuff, people. Stuff. Lots of stuff and things too, and yeah, right, and there were giz- gadgets and gizmos and gadgets and all kinds of things. Can I burn into because they did find the abilities for Summoner and Arcanist, right? They were. I have, sh- I have no idea what you're talking about, Gary. You're scaring me. They were. I I want I, I want to I want to stay. So on I've the heard. Internet. I want to keep my account. So I've heard. <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny anything, Gary. All right, let's move on. We got tons of dates to go over, so including some confusing ones for all you people. So let's start with uh, this date, August eighth, live letter eight. The focus Woo-hoo. on the letter is obviously going to be uh, the beta and the launch. Uh, do we do we think that the rest of the month of August gets uh, cleared up here with the live letter? Better. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I would hope so. Uh, listen, if, if all of August has to get cleared up here, there can't be any more suspense. It's going to kill us. <laughs> and I mean, we got to know when when all the clients are going to be available and what days are going to have early access. We got to know all of the little details. Everything it, it has to happen. It has to happen. Please, has to. please, Yoshi. Burns, you think uh, are you anticipating any sort of big like? surprise questions or announcements here i mean yoshi p is he kind of likes to sneak in those little unexpected announcements when he can do <laughs> right like uh what's what's that meme uh it asked him about new hairstyles and he revealed a new race um, <laughs> yoshi p definitely known for that type of stuff i don't think so here i think you know it's home stretch let's finish this off and get through launch i think it's just gonna Maybe answer a couple of questions or elaborate on some things that have been mentioned before in live letters, but never demoed, never explained in a great de- in great detail. Just kind of we'll talk about them later. Concepts maybe those show up here, uh, and then the month of August all the way through the twenty seventh gets kind of laid out date by date because I'm sick of clicking on Square Enix's site here and seeing different dates for everything every time I click something. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's interesting. So we have the, this image, uh, which was the message, uh, a link on Square Enix site was returning last week. It says beta registration is scheduled to begin August 17th, 2013. What... What happened with this? <laughs> and Twitter went crazy. <laughs> yeah, that was that was not good. Yeah, especially after you know saying for so long, August 9th, August 9th, August 9th. It's got to be August 9th. August 9th <laughs> makes the most sense. That happens. You don't know how many questions and how many confused people there were. It just it yeah. Didn't, you two speculated well. open beta would be uh, the ninth or the tenth last week, right? What happened? What happened yep. to the two experts on my show? You guys are fired. <laughs> <laughs> that that happened. That is what happened. That happened. That as well. happened. Nobody had any clue what it meant either. It was like, okay, well, does it mean that registration will open up again? Because we had talked about that last show where beta registration was closed now, but they were going to open it again at some point during the open beta for some last minute stragglers to get in. So it was like, okay, is the seventeenth the date they're going to do that? Meaning the open beta is already running by that point. Is the 17th going to be the date for the open beta? Well, if it is, then what? Is the open beta and the early access two days each? Because Yoshi already said there'd be one, two, or three days between the two. But the math doesn't work here. Help us, help us. Well, luckily, that image is gone now. You can't, that you can't get gone, that yeah. image. That one's gone. Uh, oh. I tend to think it's going to be the beta will have already been running, and that'll be the last minute stragglers if the 17th is an actual date. I think that's what the date will be. Yeah, agreed. All right, so the site doesn't say this now, but what does the current message mean? Um, this one here says, as of July 22nd, 2013, 2 a.m. PDT, we have temporarily closed the beta tester application site in preparation for beta phase four, final beta test. Uh, the site will reopen once beta phase four begins. Are they going uh, to be opening up registration for beta again? Yes, sir, they will be. Uh, anybody who uh, missed their beta registration back before uh, back before July 30th, essentially, you're going to have a chance. I mean, it, it'd be hard to call it an open beta and say, you're not allowed, you're not allowed, you're not allowed. It's essentially a chance for anyone who didn't register before to actually get into the open beta and try the game. All right, and so you guys are both really... This would have made a lot more sense by itself, right? Yes. As soon as this went up, I would have been like, okay, I get it. I still don't know the dates, but I get it. And the, the 17th man I in, in, instantly was out on Twitter, and it was a mess. It was a mess. I wanted to cry. All right, so what's the update? What do you guys, What are we thinking now for open beta or, or early access now with the new information that we've gotten? Well, uh, I'll throw my numbers out there, All my right. predictions. Uh, I'm thinking Tuesday. Uh, it won't be this Friday. I, I'm 100% sure it won't. It, like, there's no way. That, there's no client. There's, there's no information anywhere about what could possibly happen. And we're expecting all the August announcements on Thursday. He's not going to announce it Thursday, give you 12 hours to download it. And then ha that's, that, that's not what's going to happen. So Tuesday, August 13th is my prediction. It'll run for a full week. Then it'll shut down for the three days. On Friday, the I think that's the 23rd, I believe. Friday the 23rd, it'll run through until launch. That I think 23rd is our early access. So you go, really the only thing that changed with your prediction then from last week was open beta got delayed and early access got shortened by two days. Pretty much, yeah. It's my prediction, at least. That's hard to, that's hard to argue with, my friend. That's, that's hard to argue with. But just to be contrary, I will. Oh. I'm going to say we go into open beta on the 12th, Monday. Are you sticking with Tuesday just because it's like the typical release day uh, of the week? I'm, I'm sticking with Tuesday because Monday's never a good day for anybody. <laughs> I'm, then I'm so, going Monday. I'm going Monday. Okay. He's going Monday? Just, just right, Monday. I'll, 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 just, I'll just go Saturday. Oh, it's not going to be Saturday, Gary. I know Come it's on. not. I'm just making that up. I'm just, you know. Should've said watch, Wednesday. It, watch it freaking be Saturday now, too. Watch it be Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> watch him watch announce it on Thursday. You have Open 48 up. hours, go download. Well, they know, they know most, <laughs> most people can play during the weekend. You know, the weekend is more open during the week. So I don't know. That'd, that'd probably be, I don't know. I'm going to go Saturday. I don't know. Yeah, but um, then the, for, the, the, oh, I'm sorry. Ahead. I was going to say, but then the 17th falls in line with all those people joining later because then that would be for the weekend. And it's like a stress test almost. So they can add more players coming in after they've already tested it with the initial beta testers. 
That's why I think I got. That's why I got my. Dates. See who's got it. We will know soon enough. <laughs> um, for anyone worried out there, we're still sure launch is the 27th right the way the dates keep dropping and changing i just want to make sure that everybody's calm cool and collected launch is still the 27th correct yes so far pending the live oh, letter stop. on thursday don't say that please don't say that i don't want to i don't want to lock on amazon and it says like hey, oh, Yoshi uh, P's September already said if something bad happens he would delay the launch if he needed to so uh fingers crossed guys don't uh don't push the yoshi p don't push the p don't cross him don't cross the p all right last up uh before we do some viewer questions uh last week some of you guys were disappointed i can't understand why <laughs> that we didn't uh touch on some crafting a bit more in our recap take it easy it's one episode <laughs> this is a weekly thing <laughs> We got lots to talk about, chat room. We're going to become really good friends. We're going to hang out for weeks upon weeks. You've seen some other shows. We're 150 episodes in. We got lots to talk about. It wouldn't be much of a weekly show if we covered everything in episode one. So in fairness, though, we want to talk a little bit about crafting this week uh, and bring some people up to speed. So again, for some of you out there who've been following it like crazy, you know a lot of this. For some of you who don't, some people really were, were you know, interested in finding out a little bit more about crafting in Final Fantasy because it is different. Um, it's a bit of a different beast than we're used to in some MMOs. Um, it's a bit more interactive. Um, but before we go into that, what the hell is this like discipline of the land, the hand, whatever the man, what are these titles? <laughs> you seem really upset about this. He does. Gary's feeling some type of way about the disciples, man. <laughs> it's just, it's just a grouping. That's all. It's nothing you'll ever pick or touch. It's. Disciples of War are your combat fighters. Disciples of uh, Magic are your magic users. Disciples of Land are your gatherers. Disciples of the Hand are your crafters. It's just a way of organizing the different classes. That's it. That's so all. can I have? Can I have uh, without? So can I have more than one crafting profession, or how does that work? Yes, you can have all of them. Every you single crafter, everything, every battle class, magic class, disciple of Hand, Land, all on one character if you want it. All right, so like I said, I did a little bit of crafting uh, in early beta, not a ton. Um, somebody give us, Burn, maybe give us give us a little uh, rundown of how the mechanics work and how it's a bit different than we might be used to in some other MMOs. Uh, it is not gather materials, click craft, and watch an animation happen and um, something magical appear in your bag. No, I love that nope. kind of crafting. And then it's usually useless, too, and I just sell it to a vendor. I love that. <laughs> It we don't is get not that? 700 no, materials in your bag, craft all, walk away, and do something. And Gary's well, out. That's, you know, well, that's what he's doing. He's crafting. He, we, yeah, we, he's we're, <laughs> we're the materials for the show, and he started crafting it, so he walked away while it finishes. There we go. Right. He's, got, he's got it all. He's out. He's out. He's had enough. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Oh, well, look, he's got to come back to craft some more. Yep. There he all is. All right. I've, I've had my meltdown is over. No, so tell me. So, how, no, how... it's it's hot bar based. It's kind of yeah. the first time I did it in uh, in I think it was beta phase two. Uh, was actually like this is kind of neat. Let me see exactly how far this goes and started leveling up carpentry a lot. Uh, it's hot bar based, and instead of having mana, you have either gathering points or crafting points. It's a dedicated resource to use on specific abilities. At its core. Yes, there is a, a random RNG element uh, that's random, random, an RNG element to it. But using your abilities in intelligent ways can totally negate that RNG. You have to use your crafting abilities in the right order at the right time for the right materials to even have a chance of success. Uh, and it's pretty wicked cool, actually. Very, very interactive. How does it gather yeah, more? Oh, good, good, Mike. I was just going to, well, for gathering, it's pretty similar. I mean, I could yeah. just talk about that. I mean, like you said, you have your, you have your crafting points for crafting gathering points. It's, it's like, it's like MP essentially. If you're a yep. battle class, it's like MP for your gatherers and your crafters. And you use some abilities to locate your gathering points. You pick an item from a list and keep in mind, gathering is a little simpler than crafting is. You pick an item from the list. It gives you a success rate. It gives you a rate of getting a higher quality version of it. it gives you a bunch of mystery items that if you're feeling 
adventurous, you can try and discover a new item at that point, and you just chip away at the gathering point. Every time you either succeed or you don't get an item, you move on to the next one. It's really simple, and just like with crafting, you have abilities that can better your success rates and your quality rates on the items. All right, so at its core, I mean, I guess, like you said, there's, there's, there's certainly a random number generator or RNG element to it. But players, and this is where it actually gets really cool, is players can use certain abilities uh, at certain times to counteract the RNG, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. For, I'll, I'll give you an example. I mean, because so, some people in chat are asking, well, what do you, what do you mean? What, what, what exactly does that mean? When uh, I was doing some carpentry, and I'm creating item A, item A has a certain durability level. Let's call it 50. And as I take actions to create this item, the durability goes down. And if at any point it hits zero before I am done actually creating the item, I will fail. The item breaks and I've got to start over. But I have certain abilities, depending on my level, I have certain carpentry abilities that can either give me a higher chance of success or add durability to a... Uh, craft in progress that's already lost some durability so I can kind of reset my timer and start acting again. You have elements that can influence the actual time and quality of it uh, rather than just click and have it appear in your back. All right, yeah. my next question, about Kyle, Mr. Abby, you played one -oh longer than anybody, um, pretty much right to the end. How in one -oh, was crafting like a viable way to get gear in 1.0, and, and was it also viable to actually make gill in the game? If you didn't craft in 1.0, uh, you're probably sane to start with. <laughs> uh, second, you, you probably missed out on a lot of some of the best quality gear that you could actually get. I mean, the only problem with crafting in 1.0, yes, you could completely sustain yourself off crafting. You, there were some major advantages that you got by crafting, some ways to get ahead of other players. And you just had the freedom to do anything that you wanted with those. Fix your own gear, melt your own materia. But the amount of time that you needed to invest to both level and to actually get this almighty gear, and the amount of resources that you had to expend was agonizing. If you failed to make a piece of gear with the right amount of materia, you didn't just have to get the materia over again. You had to go make the gear again, which meant getting the materials again and getting the materia itself again. So... Yes, it was extremely viable. It was just way more grueling than it is in 2.0. And so how do you how do you guys see it in 2.0? I mean, I, am I going to be able to make a living in 2.0 just crafting if that's what I like doing and that's all I want to do? In 2.0, yeah, definitely. I mean, with the way that uh, that gear sort of recycles its way through the economy, the importance of materia and spirit bonding gear, gear is constantly being destroyed and constantly needs to be put back into the economy. So there's plenty of room. On top of that, you have you can make foods, potions, things that people are always going to need. So if you want to put the time into crafting, you can make a lot of money that way. <laughs> Chat says uh, version one crafting gave them PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like that sounds like they got the least of it though. <laughs> right? It gets worse. It gets worse. <laughs> So would you guys say, like, I mean, a lot of times, like, crafters, I, I feel like, especially in MMOs, crafters kind of get the short end of the stick in a lot of other games, like we were talking about, where you just, like, hit a button, 40 in your bag, sell them off. Does crafting generally feel to you guys like it's not just something that's tacked on, and it's actually an important part of the game? And actually, I mean, like, results-wise. Yeah. I think it does. I think it makes it a lot more meaningful. Even Final Fantasy XI's crafting was... Uh, ridiculous uh, <laughs> and using crystals and bowing to the west at two o'clock on a rainy Tuesday and on a rainy fires day or whatever yeah uh, it's a lot more interactive so it's fun and it's meaningful so yes it wins so far in my book I hope to what mr. happy pointed out on version 1.0 I hope 2.0 it's a viable option for gear because that's something I hate is when you have all this lovely crafting, but by the time you can make it, you've already, uh, you've got already something far got better, better and stuff. you're past it. Yeah. Yeah. I am much, much more of a fan of MMOs that actually make crafters worth it. And they could actually make best in slot gear. That is yeah. my personal preference when the actual real person can make a difference. So I'm excited. Now, something that's really interesting. This was funny. Um, we've just started to see some information, uh, about fishing. Um, <laughs> and I'd say it looks unique. That's Yoshi a good P word. has said this is going to be a relaxing job, which 
I guess makes sense. That is fishing, right? Uh, so it's nothing twitch, nothing button pressy about it. What are your thoughts on fishing? I mean, when something runs the risk of being, when, it, when something is relaxing, it runs the risk of being boring at the same time. Because if it's literally something that I just have to like, if I just have to spam press one or two or three to do it, or I press the button and I wait, what am I really doing with my time while I'm sitting and watching my character do this? It's not like I'm actually fishing and I'm holding the rod, waiting to catch a bite, you know, sip, sipping on a beer. It's, I mean, I could do that essentially if I wanted to. In 14, Maybe that's but, the point. Maybe they want you to like, you know, yeah. sit in your room and RP and grab a, you know, Paps Blue Ribbon and just kind of sit back and be like, I'm fishing. I just need a break. I'm going to be pumping music into my ears whenever I'm, I'm fishing. So it's, I don't know how relaxing that is, but uh, well, I guess, I guess maybe with all the other, you know, all the other <laughs> professions being so interactive and they are so much more like a mini game and there's actually a lot of meaning to them. Maybe they did feel that there's a portion of the community that does like some sort of just like relaxing kind of not really interactive. No, that was Mike the Burns most ridiculous sentence in the world. I was Sit trying an RP with a can of Pabst blue ribbon. <laughs> Well, I'm trying to preference. understand it. I'm trying <laughs> to get it. And it also runs the risk of being too easy for gold sellers too, don't you think? If it's too easy and too simple and too relaxing, Ooh. it runs the risk of well. So, and yeah. Then, yeah, and then he said he wants to make things that are uh, that of value. So, is the incentive really to just relax without any sort of value to be had? Like the value, he says the value is going to be low. I'm worried about that. Well, he also had mentioned, I'm forgetting which interview it's in before, but yes, the items may be of lesser value, but there were also chances for items that would lead the player to have to do other things to claim mm. the reward from the fish. Um, he didn't go into details, but in my mind, that sounds like you fished up a map. Now you have a quest to go and investigate four different places and get this treasure to kind of weed out the botters that are just going to sit there and fish over and over mm. again. But Maybe Final Fantasy XI did that. Final yep. Fantasy XI did that, and it was very, very successful. I love the fishing maps, so that could that could definitely be a really good way of handling it. Maybe you could be fishing for fish sticks. <laughs> I'm. I. I just want that. Uh, Next week, that thank you were talking Gary's about. dressed in a, a yellow Wait, rain jacket and hat. <laughs> did you just? Did you say you're going to go fish for? fried fish sticks like mm -hmm. pre-cooked fish sticks <laughs> yep are you fishing at like a costco or <laughs> they got pap blue ribbon and fish sticks brother i am there all right excuse me right, sir let's... what are you doing i'm rping get out of aisle 17 I'm RPing. I'm RPing. leave me alone all right let's talk a little bit of lore uh, before we do some viewer questions uh some viewers were confused last week when we talked a bit about legacy players seeing some differences in the story so i wanted to clear some of this up um I think some people forget that this is a new game uh, that is continuing the story of version 1.0. Not, I repeat, not retelling the original story. Um, so version 2 takes place a few years after the end of an era trailer, which we've all seen, correct? Yes, absolutely. Correct. Five years. Five years. Now, is there anything that happened before the that trailer that players we feel like need to know about or will new players just be fine without going back and researching anything? Well, uh, a realm reborn, even from just the first, uh, the, the early missions, we can see that, uh, they're doing a really good job at telling the story of 1.0 in the implementation of 2.0. So between maybe looking at the website, just to understand maybe some of the characters that have come to pass or that are, are going to be important. I'd say that's really the only extent you absolutely uh, should know if you if you care about the story. But Yoshi also hid a lot of elements in 1.0 that, for the people who did care about paying attention to it uh, before, will notice it. For example, anyone out there, the uh, Asians, I believe it's pronounced, there were some special special characters that were noticeable in 1.0. So if you want to go back and look for some shadowless characters, you might find out a little hint about what's to come in a realm. How does how does um Bernsey, how does um how does the story differ in two point for legacy players? Do they have like a different opening or what? Yeah, and, and Mr. Happy, you're gonna have to chime in here because I haven't really watched this aspect too much since not being legacy myself. What I understand, what I've seen Yoshi P talk about is uh the legacy players will see a slight variation on some of the opening scenes 
compared to brand new players uh, based on them already having a lot of backstory from, or supposedly, if they played long enough, having a lot of that backstory from version 1.0. It's not supposed to be extreme or leave new players out of anything. It's more of a nod to, you know certain things, so let's have a throwback to something that you remember real quick. Yeah, it's mostly just, I mean, there are characters in A Realm Reborn that existed five years ago, and since... Yeah the perspective of the story is supposed to take place from the player's perspective. There's just, they, they recognize you and things like that. Very minor difference, like, oh, it's you, and then everything's completely the same. It's, oh, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. Chat, you're absolutely right. Good call. Thank you. Uh, this only applies, obviously, to characters on the legacy servers. A legacy player re-rolling on a regular server is not going to see these these openings. Absolutely, absolutely. Only legacy characters. No, no new characters can see all right, I want to do some viewer questions before we get out of here. I want to talk to you about our friends over at Shutterstock. Have you guys checked out Shutterstock.com yet? Uh, I wanted to show this off. So Shutterstock.com, they've got stock footage, photography, uh, vector artwork, all kinds of great stuff for your website, your blog, your YouTube channel, anything like that. Um, here is our artwork for a realm reborn or, or, or xiv reborn i talk about this a lot i try to show stuff off because i try to show you guys like actually how much we use this stuff and i'm sure most of you out there have a youtube channel and make videos and all that kind of stuff and obviously here you know you can see our fonts you know we've got the text and we've got the you know the xiv stuff up in the corner but you know we kind of wanted to do something a little bit custom and uh find something unique and yes there is actually two elements here that we overlaid on top of each other to kind of get this bit of an effect here and here's one of them. And here's the obvious one. You can't really see the first one as much, but here's the second one here. That's the obvious asset right there. Uh, you can also see some of the stars and the little glitter and stuff like that. Again, uh, just that little bit of detail and that little bit of added effect um, that can really just make your, your, your YouTube channel, your show, your, your video, whatever your creative project is actually pop and make a difference and actually look really good. We didn't sit there and make all that stuff and render all these crazy light shafts and sparkles and all that kind of stuff. We immediately go over to Shutterstock, start searching for stuff. And what you do, uh, you guys don't even, you can make it, a, you can make a free account, uh, make a free account load it up and you can start making light boxes today which actually you know you can start saving things uh sorting them and kind of just getting some ideas down of of uh what you may want to download and then if you decide that you want to uh get an account i want to save you guys 30 percent off so you all you got to do is use promo code gamebreaker8 use that uh on the checkout when you uh, sign up and make the account and save yourself 30 percent off on your account it really is it is a tool that we use here at gamebreaker.tv every single day pretty much so shutterstock.com offer code gamebreaker8 all right gentlemen i said we had something coming up in the show that everyone was gonna hang out for um so for the live people watching we are we're also going to do viewer questions, but I'm kind of anticipating a mass exodus, which is why I handed, uh, waited for the end of the show. Um, for you guys watching the download, everybody, it's live. XIVNation.com is live right now. XIVNation.com is live right now. We've been hard at work, working, 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 working. I hope you guys like it. Uh, we've just started. It has just begun. Continue it to grow, 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 and grow. I hope you guys want to make it your XIV home and the best uh, community FF XIV resource around. Tons of great stuff up there already. Um, literally, it's been up for minutes. I just stalled a little while ago and put that up there. burns has been going crazy and his eyes are bleeding because he's been posting 9,000 Mr. Happy videos. So there's all kinds of stuff up there. Please let us know what you think. Um, like I said, it's only the beginning, but really want to make like the best Final Fantasy 14 community out there for you guys, not only to find this show really easily and maybe another show possibly around Final Fantasy 14, maybe, uh, but just a bunch of other great content that the community creates, you know, guys like Mr. Happy creates amazing content. It's all up there. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff. Check it out. News, of course, we're going to be keeping you up on the news. Uh, last night, some suggestions came up that you guys wanted a dev tracker. 
We literally stayed up till 9 a.m. with zero sleep, working and getting something in place that would work. So you've got a dev tracker, all kinds of good stuff. Check it out, check it out, check it out. XIVNation.com. You can go to TV as well. It'll redirect, but .com is what we're pushing. Tons of great stuff. Go to the forums, sign up, all that good stuff. And let us know what you think. Uh, we'll open up a thread inside the forums there, and you guys can give us suggestions and things like that. But hopefully you guys make it your home. XIVNation.com. All right, let's do some viewer questions. Now that everybody's left... It's just the three of us. <laughs> oh. uh, first up this week from Brendan Moffat. Uh, Brendan asks, he says, hey, are you happy uh, they have brought back the Final Fantasy names? For example, Biggs and Wedge and others that are in FFXIV. Mr. Byrne, you happy about that? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I love the little nods that are recurring roles in the number series. Uh, bosses, Bix, uh, Biggs and Wedge, all of them. Uh, I don't, I'm, I don't know if I'm cool with Lightning. I mean, Lightning in particular. I know, you know. Okay, there's five years between the games. Thirteen has time travel. I get it. You know, th it is possible. I don't know if I like the main camp character cameos, but we'll have to see if Yoshi sticks to his own rules on on who will appear in there. But things like Biggs, Wedge, Sid. Those mainstays, absolutely thumbs up. What about you, P? Oh, it's my turn. Call you, call you P. <laughs> I just looked over and it was like, oh, oh, my turn. Uh, yeah, I think you can't have a Final Fantasy game without some nods to the series. I mean, even just every every nod, like even Bahamut and Ifrit being in the game, everything's appreciated. Lightning, I have similar opinions, uh, not in any way due to Final Fantasy XIII's performance in my opinion. But just the idea of having a main character because then it opens up worlds of possibility that people start speculating on and I just I don't I don't know. I don't like it. I think we could have done without it. I think just seeing classic I would rather have seen like a fate with old, with like Ultima weapon or uh or uh what's it called or diamond weapon or emerald like I would have liked to see those kind of enemies, but not the main character. See, and I, up on XIV Nation, one of the first pieces there is kind of like an opinion piece on the whole lightning thing. I'm of the opinion, uh, Mr. Happy, they should have gone one way or the other. Either go full-on fan service, apeshit crazy, and put everything that any fans ever wanted to see in the game, or don't do it at all. Uh, I think doing it for some and then putting together some odd little storyline and then saying, oh, well, we can't do it for your character that you want because the storyline just wouldn't work. It's kind of a ridiculous <laughs> excuse, right? Uh, I think they should have just gone hog wild or not done it at all. But Biggs and Wedge, you're okay in my book. Sid, you're okay. All the fiends, and you're all okay. Uh, you're not going to see Cloud or Eris or uh, Sephiroth or anybody like that. So we'll oh, see. We have Omni Slash. <laughs> we have Omni Slash. We gotta have Cloud now. It's, it's, they're halfway there already. And of course, I'm gonna do the fate and get the damn snow gear anyway. But it doesn't mean I'm gonna have to like it. <laughs> All right. Next up from Brandon Michael Carr. He asks. He says, uh, "I want to touch on the costume thing uh, they are gonna bring in later after launch." He says, "It's sort of like the transmog system of World of Warcraft. Do you think weapons and shields will be a part of it? What do you think, P? I don't think so." I think that uh, maybe somewhere way down the line, weapons will happen, but I have a feeling that if it ever happens with weapons, you'll never see the endgame weapons again because all the people who have them are going to replace them with like level one weapons just to, so we can see what they look like. You're going to be like, oh, you have, uh, you have that Ifrit weapon, huh? Yeah, but uh, I got this longbow, this level six longbow that I'm, I'm showing over it because I don't want people to know. I feel like it takes away a little bit from you know, the look of the game. Mr. Byrne? I, I'm going to disagree. I'm going to disagree. I think it's not initially. I mean, we're talking about a feature that's estimated to be about six months after launch anyway. Uh, or, you know, in a big update. So two and a half to six months, somewhere in that window. Uh, and I would assume at some point, yes. I'm going to say, yeah, weapons and shields will at some point be a part of it. And it's more... It's not so much the transmog system from WoW. Uh, the way I understand it, it, in the few details we have right now, it's more the way uh, Rift does their cosmetic stuff, where you have a wardrobe, uh, separate slots. So you have it's you're not transmogging the actual gear; you're throwing gear into a secondary set of slots. 
uh, vanity slots in this case. So, yes, I'll say yes on that. I'm All right, probably next wrong, but I'll say yes. Gary, you're the tiebreaker. Mm-hmm. And you I'm can't say, say yes. Saturday. No, I'm going to say Saturday. <laughs> Damn! I'm going to say yes. I'm actually going to say that they will open it up at some point. Don't know when, but I think that they will. Uh, Devin Barella wants to know uh, when uh, you are choosing your race starting class, do you take into consideration how common or rare the racer class is, or do you just play what you want? I make this an easy one. I always just play what I want. Well, uh, I, took a, I took it into a little bit of an account. I know there's going to be a lot of male Makotes out there and female Makotes. Uh, so I took that into account a little bit, but I, for the most part, it's a char- it's a character I wanted to make anyway. So it's not that big of a deal, but I wanted to try and differentiate myself a little bit from the masses. Well, you, Mr. Byrne? Yeah. When I saw the, the 9,000 long Reddit post about, uh, races in Makote was way up there with a high majority. Uh, I was very relieved because I didn't want to be Makote. Uh, and that was my only stipulation. So I will not be like everybody else, but it's because of me playing the way I want. All right, last of this week, uh, Aiden Noon asks, what do you think of Final Fantasy XIV's party system? Uh, four being a light party, eight being a heavy party, and a raid group consisting of three heavy parties adding up to 24. Uh, do you think this will work in the long run, or should they look at the World of Warcraft model more? What do you think, Mr. Byrne? Uh, I think it'll work as well as it's designed to work based on the content being created for those party sizes. I, I don't think the I think the only way you want to look at WoW's models if you're intending on doing the content different. But if you're building the content based around four, eight, and twenty four, I think it'll work just fine. How about you, Ben? Yeah. I mean, I, that's how I feel too. I mean, it's not like it's the same content with you know different sets of uh, people and varying difficulties. It's the difficulty scales with the amount of people, so it's generally considered that four that the four man content will be as you're working your way up to fifty and getting into it. The eight man content will be more difficult than the four man content, and the twenty four man content will be more difficult than the eight man content. So with that scaling that way, I think it works perfectly fine. It sort of encourages you to go out there and meet more people if you want to get to the higher tiers of content. It's also nothing new. It's what they did in 11, was 24. Was Michael Poveromo. There was 24 following. Alliance content. Oh, it was, uh, it was because they were a party of six. So it was six, 12, 18. It's three, four. I mean, you had things that went up to 64 people. But <laughs> there were some crazy things in 11. Michael Boverola, uh, follow um, him on Twitter at Mr. Happy1227. And we will see him each and every week right here uh, every Tuesday for PST for the XIV Reborn. Always a pleasure, sir. Uh, Michael Byrne, follow him on Twitter at Magic Man. It's M I G I C K M A W N with a one. Don't yes, Chad, that. I know it's 18. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. He made a mistake. Forgive him. It's been a while. It's been quite a while. Hey guys, you can follow me at Gary Gannon, G-A-R-Y-G-A-N-N-O-N. And uh, thank you so much for, for, for showing up. These past two weeks have been kind of crazy and uh, overwhelmingly awesome response. Like I said, XIVNation.com is open for business. We are not shutting it down. It is open, open, open. Everybody watching the show, please go over, check it out. Please let us know what you think. We want to make uh, the best home out there for all of you guys, the community, and make it the number one community for Final Fantasy XIV players on the internet. So if you guys have suggestions how we can make it better, please tell us, tweet at me, post it in the in the forums, do something. We are watching because this place is for you. So go check it out, XIVNation.com. Like I said, we do the show live every single Tuesday at 4 PST. We'll be back again next week. So have a great week, and thanks for watching again. You guys are awesome. See you next week.